and then we will go through this um, award in, 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 in some detail, right? We'll talk about the application, et cetera. And then of course, there's gonna be a Q&A at the end. So the outline for today is we will do overview on eligibility. We will talk about support provided. Um, we will talk extensively about application and the review, and then share some additional tips. We will have a Q&A at the end and you're welcome to just sort of raise your questions um, live or you can put them in the chat if you want to and we will uh, try to get to whatever um, you want more clarification on. It is a different award, so, um, you know, so, so bear with us. So overview. Uh, PO Scholar Award is administered by the Philanthropic Educational Organization. And just as you see from the name, right, a philanthropic organization, it will be sort of the, the, the mission and goals of this funder will be a little bit different than, um, um, than some other ones that you might be familiar with. The PO Scholar Award uh, program was established in 1991. And it provides substantial merit-based awards for women of the United States and Canada who are pursuing a doctoral level degree at an accredited college or university. Now, there is an international program that's run by the PEO as well. So if there is anyone here who is not um, United States or Canada um, citizen, right, there are still, um, there's still a program uh, for international um, women in graduate school. So if you have any questions, we can um, talk a little bit more about it at the end, but this is focused on the um, US and Canada program. So the award is $20,000. Um, they have made about 2,500 awards since 1990 um, and about 28 million awarded since 1990. So it's pretty, it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty generous program um, the way that it's administered and sort of um, that it's been, it's been run. So again, sort of some eligibility here, right? So it's for doctoral candidates who at minimum hold a bachelor's degree, are enrolled at a US or Canadian institution, are US citizens or permanent residents, identify as women, and are within two years of graduating from a doctoral program and have at least one full academic year of work remaining in August of the year you are awarded. Right, so this is this is um, um, similar to sort of the completion fellowships that you might um, have heard about, but it is still run a little bit differently than those. So the requirement is to be within two years from graduating from the doctoral program um, and have a full academic year of work left. Support provided, just again in some detail. It's a one-year stipend of 20,000. The interesting part here is how these um, funds may be used, right? The funds may be used for necessary expenses, including educational expenses, living expenses, dependent childcare, travel to professional meetings, conferences, and seminars. So this is pretty um, generous in the way that you're allowed to use this funds, including personal spending and including, um, you know, even childcare, right? So thinking about this, um, if there is a budget to, to, to disclose um, that these are the expenses that are covered. And I'll give it to Tyler. Thanks. So I'm going to walk us through um, some of the more nitty gritty stuff um, in terms of the application. PEO has a really unique and strange and baffling um, application process. So um, there's just some kind of details to become familiar with. Um, so their application process works through a nomination process. Um, and so the way PEO works is that um, nationally, um, there's all of these chapters local chapters um, and each chapter can nominate up to one person to be to go forward to the national competition um, to be to be um, in competition to win this award so um, we'll walk you through how that happens um, but basically um, those nominations are accepted from peo chapters between august 20th and november 20th of each year so that's the application kind of window we're getting towards, you know, 
we, we have about a month left, which is good um, in terms of like to get things moving, but it is more towards the end of that window. Um, so the first step you need to take if you're interested in this award is to be connected and nominated by a local chapter. And so you can do that by visiting the PEO website. We have screenshots on the um, latter half of um, this, this project, uh, this presentation um, that will kind of walk you through on the website where you can do that. But um, you visit their website, you request more information. Sometimes, especially I would say now that we're like further into that window, that it might not be as a fast of a turnaround to get back to you. So if you don't hear back within a week, um, I would say, or even a few days, follow up with an email um, and, and try to get that contact made because you need to be, again, nominated by a local chapter. So you need to have that connection made in order to move forward with the application. So what's also unique is that each chapter has kind of the freedom to, to determine their own nomination process. Um, as far as we know, there's not any overarching kind of criteria or guidelines how they actually select their nominees or nominee. Um, but most of them we found will conduct an interview. It's most likely a very informal interview from what we've um, talked to with candidates. So you can expect like a, a brief kind of conversation um, and just to make that connection um, because Many chapters don't not nominate anybody every year. Um, so that, that they're always kind of seeking to place. Um, so once you actually secure the nomination from a local chapter, then you have 45 days after the nomination, in this case less, since it's uh, going to be November 20th soon, um, uh, to complete the application. And then we'll go through the application now. So just keep this in mind. You're welcome to like, if there's, questions right now that you want to kind of just throw in the chat while it's still fresh because it is confusing, go for it. Um, but we can come back to it towards the end for sure in the Q&A. So the components from previous years, um, and so the, the questions can always change, but in our experience, they've stayed the same. Um, and you'll get these questions um, af after you're, you've been nominated, so you don't have access to them before, but they contain seven short essays, um, one longer essay of a thousand words describing your research program, um, a CV and three letters of recommendation. So we'll go through the seven short essays first. Um, so again, you can see they're very short, 50 to 200 word responses to prompts. Um, so what is your area of focus within your field of study? Um, if you have a dissertation, um, provide a title and lay summary, right? What milestones have you um, made towards your doctorate? What works left to be completed, et cetera? Um, a question on like what led you to this project slash degree? What excites you? Um, what, you know, led you to the current choice of Rutgers? Uh, what are your career goals? And then um, again, uh, along with Anna's line around like how you intend to actually use these funds, right? So if you need them to pay rent, you need them to pay rent. If you need them for a particular kind of research excursion, maybe that's part of it. You can detail, the more concrete details you give with budgets always the better. Um, okay, so those are the shorter essays. Then there's this one long essay, which is a thousand words, which is still fairly short um in the genre of fellowship applications but um it can be split two ways so um most of us in school graduate studies are in research-based doctoral programs but they do have they do award professional degree programs as well so you'll be in competition with them um so if you have a research-based um, thesis then you would explain you know what the project is uh, just like any other fellowship, the methodology, your data, if you're working with data, significance of the project, um, any other relevant information, findings, et cetera. Um, if you're in a professional program, um, you would then describe, you know, your chosen field, your experiences, why you chose it, any research projects you might have, um, and most likely your career goals, right? 
um, and, and some differentiating kind of factors to set you apart from your peers. Um, we'll get to this in a minute, but the audience of PEO is gonna be most likely um, very different from other competitions. I'll just put it that way for now. Your readers, as I mean, as your audience. So um, the timeline, right? As I said, nominations are accepted between August 20th and November 20th of each year. Okay, maybe I'm incorrect. Maybe you do have 45 days after. Anna, do you remember? I think that might be right. Oh, you're on mute. Yes, 45 days after um, okay. you're, you're nominated. So. Sorry, that was my mistake. Um, so you have until November 20th to secure a nomination. Once you have the application package, that is when then your deadline is set for 45 days after you receive the questions mm -hmm. that we just went through. Um, so I hope that clarifies and that actually probably relieves some anxiety too in terms of how close this is coming up. You have more time than you think, but um, you should still, if you're interested in this award, definitely get that nomination process moving as quickly as possible because you still have to schedule most likely an interview as we talked about. Um, and again, the interview process um, are, is quite informal. We've actually had like candidates who have been interviewed by someone who's like doing their groceries, right? Um, so it's like very, it can be very informal <laughs> to say it lightly. Um, so after being nominated by a chapter, you have 40 to 45 days um, to submit to the, to the national competition. Then the awards are announced for May, by May 1st and they would take tenure for the following academic year. I think we'll beginning in September through and through August. Okay, so let's go through the review process. Um, as I kind of hinted at, the reviewers are gonna be non-specialists. So there's no academic specialist, like specialist panel, right? You're not gonna be, if you're a historian, you're not gonna be read by historians. If you're a scientist, there's no guarantee you'll be, be read by a scientist. So it's really important that you're able to communicate your research and career goals in really clear jargon-free prose. And I would even go so, so far as to say almost layman terms, right? Um, you, um, most chapter kind of, and, and PEO, those involved with it will have a bachelor's degree, but even that sometimes is, um, I think it, it, they will have bachelor's degrees in most cases. So that's kind of like the level of education in terms of just the expected readership. Um, and, and just keep that in mind. So they could be at a school for a long time. Um, it's not like they're um, actively serving faculty who are in kind of the research and uh, expect uh, the kind of academic pros we like to throw around sometimes. So just keep that in mind. You really want to write in the clearest, simplest way about your project, especially for that research document. Okay, so here's the review criteria they use. Um, and so you'll definitely want to keep this in mind as you um, formulate these two kind of documents, the short essays and the longer one. So your potential to make significant contributions um, to your varied fields of endeavor um, or a positive impact on society your letter of recommendations um, from three university professor professors or other professional mentors who can address the quality and future impact of the candidate and her work um, evidence of scholarly activities so your publications presentations patterns performances which will be gleaned i'm assuming from your cv um, you can also probably try to work those into the short essays but it might be a bit difficult um your academic awards and honors again your cv your academic records um your grades career objectives um and your unique academic leadership and global experience okay so anna's gonna just walk us through the back end of this of like the actual nomination process in terms of like where to go on the website so just some additional tips for sort of how to learn more about what PO is and, and, and how to sort of apply to them. 
Um, and it's, it's, as Tyler said, right, when he was talking about who is reading the application, who is the, who is the audience and why it needs to be in a sort of junk, jargon free, um, you know, easy to understand prose. It's because this is, as I said at the beginning, this is a philanthropic organization, right? It's basically women helping women. It's women who have um, done well in their careers. They could be coming from industry. They could be coming from um, some other professional organizations, right? And basically that's just helping women um, in their PhD careers in the graduate schools, right? To just to graduate and, and, um, and, and, and you know, make their own impact on society in their turn. So thinking about sort of, you see their header, right? Women helping women reach for the stars. And I think that just tells you um, a lot of what you need to understand about sort of how to present yourself, but also who is sort of reading your stuff. They need to understand the impact that you want to make on society and in your field, right? So us saying that it needs to be simple, that doesn't mean that it needs to be simplified or dumbed down or anything like that. It just means that you want to get everyone who might be non-specialist or will be non-specialist in your field, super excited and understanding the impact that you promise to make or that your research promises to make, right? Um, so review the PEO mission and informational video. They have them on the website, right? Understand their mission and goals. And I told you kind of the, the, the bits of it, right? But again, sort of do the due diligence, go on the website, understand where they're coming from. Um, and that, that will help you uh, figure out how to present yourself. Then, um, of course, review the full policies and eligibility requirements, right? That's kind of what you have to do once you do any of this um, fellowship applications. And then, you know, there's, there's the button for requesting more information. If you need it, you can, you know, get more information about sort of the process if you're confused or, or um, whatever else. Again, program officers are there to help you or somebody's there to help you um, sort of navigate um, the process. It is always a good idea to... Just to jump in there, yeah. um, the request more information is actually the form you'll fill out to be, to take it to the nomination, to get to get connected with the chapter. So um, you wanna click that button and fill out the information um, and someone apparently will contact you to put you into contact with the chapter. Again, um, Students have had mixed, you know, success with hearing back from PEO sometimes. So if you don't hear back, make sure you reach out to them and, um, you know, follow up, be like, I requested more information. I just want to make sure I'm connected. And you can do that in a few days, up to a week, you know, I would say. Um, yeah, sorry to interrupt. No, and then, then you're right. And sometimes you get, you know, you reach this people and it's in the weirdest places. I talked to a lady that was in the grocery store um, and I, apparently I called and it was her cell phone number. So I was really stunned. <laughs> but this is just kind of the organization that it is. And sometimes it's convoluted and it's hard to sort of figure out how things work. Um, but the thing is, the awards are really generous and, you know, they're there to sort of award this money, right? So it's it's worth it to um, figure out the way to um, find answers to your questions. Um, always a good idea to um, watch and read about past winners, right? So who are they highlighting on their website? How is this person presenting themselves? It's just, you can just glean more information. This is a good practice about any fellowship award that you're applying for but probably specifically for the ones where it is more difficult to sort of understand how to, um, how to fit in or how to present yourself. So that's just always good practice. 